we are going to study three problems okay so if you are given some points okay so p0 p1 is one segment and then you are given p0 p2 then you have to find that p0 p2 does it move counter clockwise respect to p0 p1 so if i have to reach from p0 p1 to p0 p2 which is nearer counter clockwise direction or clockwise which is much larger so this you have to find so if p0 p2 was here then you have to move in the clockwise direction so the first question is this given three points okay so p0 p1 so the line segment p0 p2 where is it counter clockwise or clockwise to p0 p1 then the next question is we have p0 p1 as one line segment another one as p1 p2 then when we go from p0 to p1 and then from p1 to p2 so do we make a left turn or a right turn so here i was going like this so we are making a left turn to go to p1 p2 okay if i was going like this for p2 so it would have been a right turn so can you find it so this is the second question the third question is you are given two line segments first one is having coordinates p1 here i mean is x1 y1 the x1 y1 coordinates for p2 x2 y2 coordinates similarly x3 y3 x4 y4 so these are given the p1 p2 points for the first segment p3 p4 for the second segment you have to find do they intersect okay so the cases may be like this p1 p2 and p3 p4 okay so they are not intersecting so you have to find those so these three questions we are going to answer the first two questions we are going to answer in this lecture itself the third one in the next lecture okay so let's see but before moving let's make our muscles okay so that we can handle those questions okay so let's have some tools so first tool vector representation okay so points we will represent by x and y coordinates p0 means okay so there are vectors vectors i think you must be knowing so we will look at a cross product so p1 is a vector okay so it's given the x and y coordinates are given p2 for it also are given now the cross product of this is basically the value is determinant so this is basically determinant x1 x2 y1 y2 so the value is x1 y2 minus x2 y1 okay so this basically tells the area of this parallelogram but what we want to know that okay so if this is the segment we have a line segment p1 and p1 here means there is a vector which starts at 0 and ends at p1 point so this is the vector p2 is another vector which starts at origin and ends at p2 so if this is the case these two line segments are there so is the line segment or vector p2 counterclockwise of p1 or clockwise so if you find this cross product so if it is positive it means p1 is clockwise from p2 okay so if it is positive it means p1 is clockwise from p2 and if p1 cross p2 is less than 0 it means p1 is counterclockwise so this is there and now let's say for line segments p0 p1 and p0 p2 so we have something like this we have p0 p1 and p0 p2 so these are the line segments then we need to find okay so which is p0 p2 counterclockwise of p0 p1 and so on okay so that's what we have to find so let's try to see so if i want to so here the problem is how to use the previous theory okay so theorem that okay this of the cross product so what i do we know about the origin so let's shift the origin here and make it come to this point okay so i shift the origin and it comes to now this place so this vector after shift of origin it will become p1 minus p0 this will become p2 minus p0 okay so this is not visible i think so this is the case p1 minus p0 
and this is p2 minus p0 so now we can take the cross product so the cross products for this angle is p2 counter clockwise of p1 and so on so for that we have p1 in the new origin p1 minus p0 p2 dashes p2 minus p0 if you take their cross product so p1 minus p0 cross p2 minus p0 so it's x1 minus x0 is the x coordinate of this one in the new axis so this will come out to be this particular value so now again if p1 dash cross p2 dash is greater than 0 okay so this means what so here we had done p1 cross p2 so again so if p1 cross p2 is greater than 0 it means p0 p1 is clockwise from p0 p2 okay so this is the case it's else it's counterclockwise so basically you will get the direction by calculating this cross product okay so now the thing is we have solved the first part that okay if we have two line segments so starting at the same origin so when we have to move towards other line do we have to move clockwise or counter clockwise next thing that we give is if i'm going from p0 to p1 and then from p1 to p2 so where how do i make a turn at p1 okay so this is the case so either from p0 to p1 and when you move from p1 to p2 you will make a left turn like in this figure or when from moving from p0 to p1 and then from p1 to p2 i make a right turn so i was going p0 p1 was in this direction but to move to p2 i made a right turn so how will we decide it so basically if you see so if i find this vector p0 p2 and then check what is it relative to p0 p1 if p0 p2 is counter clockwise relative to p0 p1 then we are moving left isn't it so i'm moving p0 p1 from p1 we move to p2 so i just find is p0 p2 counter clockwise of p1 then we are making a left turn at p1 otherwise if p0 p2 is clockwise to p0 p1 then i'm making a right turn so again you can use the cross product to find this so we have solved this problem also in the next lecture we will see about two line segments do they intersect okay so this is the line segment p3 p4 is another line segment do they intersect okay so they might not intersect because one case will be this is the case of intersection p3 and p4 if they are on the same side they will not intersect okay so this is one case and then what other cases one case will be p1 p2 p3 p4 they just intersect another case might be p1 p2 and then p3 p4 again they will not intersect because it is outside this line segment p1 p2 so we will check all these conditions so you please check out the next lecture thanks a lot if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel and please like this video thanks a lot